Okay, so let's get back to quarterly reports. Um, I'm going to do a quick demonstration and then you, I'll hand you either sample um, quarterly reports that you can enter or you can, I don't know if any of you brought your own to practice with. I was hoping somebody did. I only have five examples. I did. So if you could share or something. So um, each one of these I have to go into the Optus and set everything up so that you're able to do this with the fictitious users. So it takes a long time. Okay, so I think maybe I'll save this recording real quick. Thank you for your patience. That's the volume. Oh, I wasn't capturing it yet. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm sure you did it in camera. Yeah. <laughs> in your life. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start. Should we be still logged in as Jay, or should we be logging in as ourselves, or what um, should we be doing about Well, right that? now you're just going to watch, but when we okay. start doing it, I'm going to give you the sample one, and you're going to log in as a fictitious person, because I know these are all nice and clean, and it'll be a lot easier and less confusing. So, um, or if you want to, log in as whichever user would have the privilege to create documents. And then you may not be able to submit it because you may not, I'm not sure how you're all set up, have an e-response keyword that's valid anymore. See what I'm saying? No? You don't see what I'm saying? Don't have so a stay, in, stay logged in as Jay. Probably that's the best bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just do it. Just use me. Mm -hmm. However, we changed. if you're both creating the same quarter report, that might oh, cause problems. So, mm -hmm. so you, you won't be able to submit them is the problem. Well, well I, I changed them. We're not trying to submit them anyways. I'm yeah. Sorry. I mean, and I set the practice ones up so that you actually could submit it just so you'll get that practice, but it's two steps. It's not that hard. To, it's not yeah. that you really need to So you just log in as yourselves and, and create. create a new own quarterly report. Okay. And then you and can even forward them to Jay, and he could, you know, that's how you probably happen in real life anyway. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay so I'm going to create a, a quarterly report as someone who's not the primary person. <laughs> And this is starting on page 73 in your user guide if you want to follow along or if you want to have that open when you're doing it yourself. So the first thing you do is create documents, create periodic report. I'm going to leave it at Charlotte's Web Transit and say next. The biennium is pre-selected to be the current one, but then you can change it if you want. I'm going to leave it there. And then this is the verifying that your assets have been reported correctly or entered correctly in the system. So verify your assets, make sure the biennium is correct, and then click create. And then this is just giving you the number, agency periodic report for the 0911 biennium, and that's the control number two. And if you wanted to write that down, you could just to keep it safe. And then the wizard begins. So this is those 13 steps that you saw in the PowerPoint yesterday. And again, it's just telling you what the number is. And you don't do anything on the screen other than say next. Then it takes you to the second step of the wizard. And it's asking for a document date, which is today's date. It's whatever date you're creating this document. So you can either key it in or use the little calendar for today. Optus knows that Charlotte's Web already has quarters one through five in the system, so it defaults to quarter six. It, you can change it, I'm not sure why you would, but it's defaulting there for you. So I'm just gonna leave it at, at that. Click next. Okay, so the person you select here is the person who will be signing or submitting this for your agency. It's not you if you're just the preparer. So I'm logged in as Fern, but Charlotte is the one for my agency who submits things. So I'm going to choose her as the authorized representative. And then her information auto-populates here. You can change phone number and email address if it appears incorrectly here, but it would only change it for this document that you're working on, for this quarterly report. Um, if you wanted to change it permanently so it, next time you chose her it populated correctly, then you'd have to go back like we talked about yesterday 
um, and change it at the provider details. So if she's the primary contact, then you can't change her phone unless True. you called it in. You're smart. True. But you could change it here, and it would just be for this document. Okay, next. Address, same thing here. You can change, these are all um, editable, if that's a word, fields, but it's auto-populated. Yesterday I was saying as you get comfortable, you can skip some of these. So you, you could go from this number screen um, and then just click on, like if you know the address is fine, you could just click on the next one. But I'm more comfortable just keep clicking next so I don't forget anything. So here we get to volunteer and non-cash resources. And I would put in that I had, let's say, 20 hours of volunteer drivers this past quarter. And I'm going to put in what I pay my, normally would pay my drivers, let's say it's $9.75. Um, if you, somebody volunteers to drive one of your buses and he happens also to be, let's say, your attorney, you don't put in here what you would pay him if he was doing your taxes for you. You put in what you would pay him as a bus driver, what the standard rate is. And then if you tab, Optus auto calculates that for you. And then, I don't know, let's say I had a volunteer scheduler or dispatcher. I have no idea what they make. And you can just fill all that in. Um, so the, the hours per quantity, what's that? That's hours per week? or? Total for hours. the total quarter that you are reporting for. Total hours right there Yep. for the quarter. Mm -hmm. And if you had six drivers, you would just total all their hours for the three months of the quarter, put it in there, and then put the unit value. So total hours Yep. Okay. So that QTY is not part of is that That's for the, these fields down here, which I'll get to in a second. So yeah, if it's time, then you use your unit would be hours. And if it's they donated three signs, that would be the quantity. And these are all um, optional fields, so you don't have to put, <coughs> in some places you have to put zeros in if, they're, if you're not reporting anything here, you can just um, tab through them. So let's say we had some contributed professional services. Um, legal advice. And in the course of giving legal advice, our attorney spent 20 hours doing whatever. Um, attorneys make quite a bit more. Although, you know what they say about free legal advice, it's not worth very much. So I'll put like a dollar. Anyway, so there's that. Then let's say you had a second contributed professional service. You notice there's only one line here. You put your cursor in this, anywhere along this first line and you hit enter on your keyboard and it adds another line for you. So then, and you can do that indefinitely. Video production. You're going to tell us your going rate? Nope. Okay, let's say it's <laughs> <you're going. laughs> 10 hours at. <laughs> Five bucks an hour. Five dollars an hour. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why, why would you want to keep that a secret? If we wanted to hire you, we'd need to know it. <laughs> yes, but he can't. As he can't. He can't. That's the last part. Anyway, then you could continue doing that. If you had more, just put your cursor here, hit enter, you'd get another line. Same thing with the other in-kind services. So let's say somebody donated some posters, and there were 10, 10 posters, and they're worth $5 a piece or something like that. So you've entered all your volunteer and non-cash resources in it, um, calculated everything for you, and gave you the total here. So then you could cross-reference if that matched what you thought you had or whatever. So any questions about those fields? Okay. So then we get to service data. So here are rides, hours, mileage, and other information. The, there's a slight difference between what shows up here and what was on the former quarterly report. They had 
For service data, they had total rides, elderly and disabled, and then hours and mileage, and they had fixed route other than fixed route and the total. So it's slightly different the way it's laid out here. Um, and just be careful that you're reading what it says here. I mean, that sounds kind of obvious, but total passenger one-way rides, fixed route. Let's say we had 3,500. And then non-fixed route, let's say we had 2,000. Then it jumps back to the fixed route, elderly and disabled rides. Let's say we had 5,000. And then non-fixed route, elderly and disabled, let's say we had 15,000. Well, the be top be numbers are oh, yeah. wouldn't it be less yep. than the total right. passenger? You're right. Yeah, the total always has to equal eld so elderly this would and disabled be or be more. Otherwise, it won't let you. Yeah. Actually, so is that right? You could have. It's the elderly and disabled mm, one. Well, right. The fixed total route. needs to be at least five thousand up at the top. Yeah, it has to be less than five thousand there. Elderly, elderly and disabled one way rides fixed route. It has to be less than thirty five hundred. There you go. Mm. That would work. Because the total has to. Is it be less total. than the total? It could be See, more than the total. It's not just me. No, this is confusing. <laughs> I'm confused. using something that I've used for every training, and nobody's ever said anything to me about it. Well, everything's so stable. It's though, a mistake, and Sharon won't accept that if the, okay, if the top ones are okay. less. So, your total your one way like total rides total fixed is route is 3,500. So, that, the, and that total, includes the elderly, the elderly and disabled, disabled is included. Yeah, okay. correct. Yeah, it's a subcomponent, so it couldn't Got be it. more. I knew that, but I thought I was doing it right. Okay. <laughs> so that would be acceptable. So Optus, it sounds like, will not error out if you put if you don't fill this out correctly. Is that right? I I don't think it does error out. So that's something that would be handy. Mm -hmm. That if you had if you put it in wrong, like I just did, it would say these two must match. Just like the odometer stuff. Yeah. 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 Blue every day. That's true. I kind of got lost in all of this. Is I don't blame you. Is the, <laughs> is, is the top total supposed to equal the total um, disabled and elderly and disabled? It needs to include. There's, no. These are one-way rides. It just needs to and include these are one-way rides. Right. Okay, so it, the, the third one can't exceed the, the amount of the top one. It's part of. Right. Okay. Right. It would only it would only equal it if you had the only thing you gave was right. elderly and disabled yeah, rides. I, I get that. I just wanted to be sure. Yeah. So it seems like it would make more sense if the both the fixed routes were at the top and then you had both the yeah. non fixed or something. But yeah, for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Okay. So hopefully, I didn't totally confuse people because I'm totally confused. All right. So then we get to hours for both fixed route and non fixed route. What's a what's a normal quarter <coughs> fixed route revenue operation hours? Is that I'm sorry. out of bounds? Five thousand hours? And then you put in your mileage. And again, I don't know what these are, so I'm just putting them in. Okay. Then the fourth one down is other information. Are you aware of other PTD grantees that may also be reporting these service data? So that's so that we can keep track of potential double counting. And if you said yes, you would just put in whoever it was. Okay, let's get past that screen. <laughs> then we have financial statement. You notice that each one of these has an asterisk by it, so you have to put something in the field. Um, if you have nothing to report, you just put a zero. So let's say we had that much in fair re revenue, and then we'll just put some zeros in here. Say we had $1,200 in state assistance, 1800 other state, didn't have any local. 
And then you do the same thing with your expenses. If you don't put anything in here and you try to go to the next screen, it will tell you. And the numbers in parentheses after the error, that's the 14th field down, I believe, is that right? Yeah, so it's fields 14 and 15 that are missing something. That's what it's telling you. So just put zeros in if you didn't have anything. I don't believe that you can save this screen midway through. Um, it's not such a big deal on this one, but when you start doing mileage and you have two or three pages and you're trying to enter mileage in, be prepared to do it all in one session because it doesn't save in the middle. We're working on that and we're getting a little conflicting advice or uh, information even back at home about whether it will or will not save, but Jenny's been testing it and it doesn't. So you may have to put in even just placeholders like that. If you had to get up and go somewhere, then it would save it and you could go back in and correct it. Placeholder, you mean like the like zero? Zeros. Like the zero. Okay. okay. The next one is grant information. So this is individual grant agreement information that you might want to tell us. It's, it's optional. <coughs> and you notice it has each grant agreement number here. And so it will show all your grant agreements, even ones that are closed, if we're still in the same biennium. So any that have closed, say if we're working in 0911, if you had any grants that closed, they'll still appear here, and you just ignore it because um, there's another <coughs> report. And the only thing you can do here is enter something in this field, such as, I don't know. So if you were going to report on that and ask for a reimbursement request through the budget detailed sheet, would you want to list that there? Say, see budget detail sheet or notify that you're going to draw it down? Not necessary. You could. That would be probably helpful. What we're thinking of doing in the future is using this to collect um, program income, I think we talked about, because that's something we need from you. And there was another form that we were sending out. And, um, this program would be a good place. In terms of what? So oh, income this is why we're sharing this here. Can you describe program income? <laughs> um, it's income that you get, like, I think it's if you pay, if Someone pays you, say, to oh. advertise on your bus. Okay. That's program income. And we've been recently told by the feds that we have to collect that from you. And so um, we're still not sure how to, how to go about getting that information from you. And this would be a great way for you to just use Office to report it in here. Right now, these screens are, are optional. Anything you wanted to tell us, though, for each of these would be great. I know when we were doing a lot of the R grants, and it was very time critical that progress was being made. Joni would have loved to have this where you could say, you know, the bus was ordered, the bus was delivered, uh, you know, we broke ground on this project or whatever. It's just a good way to communicate with us what's happening. And it does show you for each of your agreements um, how they were funded, the start and end date, and what's left. So okay. I think it's a good way to communicate with the program managers, just anything you think we might need to use, that you need to know. Will it get, it's maybe a redundant question, but does it get transferred, with the information that we put in here, they get transferred on to a record? I'm saying like, this is sort of like, uh, it would get transferred into our permanent record. Like we look at the grant, does this communication go anywhere else besides on in this field? It shows, I believe, on the PDF of the quarterly report. Okay. And that's where it will stay, okay. but it doesn't go anywhere else. Okay. Then this is the asset page, and it's asking the top part again is your entire fleet, number one, and then the second part is PTD funded vehicles only. So you would tell us how many vehicles you have in service, how many spares you have, and if there are any out of service. And then this is what pulls from the asset register. So it has the Optus assigned asset number these are all vehicles. It has um, 
your VIN number and then you So that just automatically pulls from oh, perfect. Yeah, which is why you want to make sure your asset register is accurate before you begin doing your report. And that way you don't have to mess with it. I know this is a really good feature that it just pulls and you don't have to enter. More you know things I don't. <laughs> <laughs> like where did that vehicle come from? So this is where if the status is title released, it will mm -hmm. appear here and if it's disposed it won't. So you have to put in the odometer reading, the date of the reading, and then the condition, and there's a drop down menu here. Let's say it's excellent. Joni says that as soon as one reporting period has passed on a new vehicle, it goes from being new to excellent. We still have some in there that, you know, like have, I don't know, 250,000 miles and they still say new. Which Wait, will you say that again? If it goes new? Say you just bought a vehicle and you're reporting on it. The first quarter you report on it, you report the vehicle condition as new. As new. Okay. As new. Yeah, After you've reported on it for one court, for that court, so the next time you report on it, you would change it to excellent because it's been driven for three months and it's no longer there. Okay. And like I said, some people forget to do that. <laughs> I suppose if you bought a used bus, you wouldn't start with new or maybe even excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Let's say this is good. <coughs> so th again, this screen, if you have lots and lots of vehicles, maybe several pages, two or even three pages, and will not save in progress. And Jenny has a great idea, if you don't mind sharing that. I don't mind. With how to deal with that if you have lots and lots of vehicles. Um, how to go past that screen or go if you have to go do something. Yeah, and you've probably already talked about this, that if, I don't know what the time frame of it is, but Optus does have a timeout. So if you're partway done with one of these and you don't save, your, the data from that step of your data entry could be lost. So when I work with long asset lists, I put 9,999,999 miles in all of the odometer readings. And I put some date that you probably wouldn't normally use in all the date of reading fields. And I make all the conditions new. I do that because it makes it very easy to tell at a glance which ones I haven't done anything with them yet. The key to this, though, is that Optus will cross-check every quarter your vehicle mileage against the former quarter and if you happen to be somehow working on one where there's a quarter after that in there, it cross-checks future quarters too, like if you're editing an old APR. So you can't, you know, there, it's a little bit limited, but as long as you're working on your current quarter, you can do this and click save and it'll save all of that. And then you can go through and edit each one. That way, if in, you're in the middle of data entry, and a message pops up and says, reading date less than previously reported, you think, oh no, I have to go check my vehicle mileage again. Maybe I read it wrong. You have to walk away from Optus. So you can use all nines in that field and save so that you can come back and edit later. Just don't leave it like that because then next time you won't be able to report on your vehicle. The other thing that you'll notice is if I put, <coughs> this is quarter six, if I put something in here, like Joni was saying yesterday, you can't drive backwards. Finally put 10 miles on here. We're talking about reading less than previously reported. And I think the one, if you're editing an old one and you've reported after it, or you're editing quarter four, that you've already submitted quarter four, five, the message says, odometer less than subsequently reported or right. something like that. It's just very confusing. I have seen that one. Yeah, so. And if um, you find yourself stuck in a loop, give a call and yeah. we'll help. Yeah. And th that's why she's saying to put the, all the nines in there because you know that you would not have reported more than that. And if this is confusing, which it may very well be until you do it, uh, 
just contact us. Okay, so then we will say next. Then it comes to accident reporting. Has your agency had any vehicle accidents related to your transit service? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say yes. Were injuries involved? No. If you answer yes to either one of these, you click on add accident and it brings up some fields where you can enter the accident. And so you put in the VIN number. Whether it was a, a minor or a major accident or even just an incident, and you have to double check with Joni or go on our website, the difference between an incident and a minor accident, I'm not clear on, but um, use your best judgment. There were no fatalities, no injuries, the vehicle was not disabled. Let's say we did do a drug and alcohol test. And then you can just say, say um, save it so you can see what happens. Then if you decide, wait, I think I already um, reported this accident last quarter, um, you can just delete it. You can't delete it if all the fields are not filled out though. So if you get halfway done and think, oops, I already did that last time, you've only entered the VIN number, let's say. Optus won't let you delete it until everything's filled out. This is one of those glitches. So you, if that ever happens, just make sure you just put something random in there. And then I think it may be just the, the required field have to have something in it before you can then delete it. Mm -hmm. That's true. Is it? Let's see what happens if I say. Yeah, see, it's telling me that they're empty. Just is kind of silly, but. Okay, and if you do file a DMV accident report because of this accident, we would like you to attach that to the quarterly report. And you would do that here at attachments, which I'll get to in just a second. Now, I won't, this will cause an error at the end when I try to complete this. If I just say next and move on, I've said that, that there was an accident, but I haven't given any um, details about it. So if you decide that you've already reported this, make sure to deselect the yes and, and make it a no. <laughs> okay, so I am, um, just click no on civil rights. We'll just move past that screen. Then you get to the optional agency narrative, and this is for your entire agency. Um, it's always good to have your caps lock on. Just kidding. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> if you have um, if you have issues that you've discussed with, uh, say Jenny on a vehicle or something, and she says, "Oh, just if you could just put that information in your optional agency narrative section about that one vehicle that we're still working on, so it didn't pull through your report or whatever." That's where you would do this, and you can put all kinds of uh, information in here that we need to, might need to know. So, but grant but grant tidbit information you should put in the grant narrative parts, right? Right. Grant specific, specific is this in is that. This is more of all other stuff. Is in grant yeah. information, okay. and this is over overall. Okay. Yeah. And then the last field is attachments. So this is where you would put the dreaded budget detail worksheet. So you type in the title of it. Um, we all know it by BDW, so it's easier than typing out budget detail worksheet. You will have already completed it and saved it to your computer. So then you go click on Browse, you're at your desk, you know where you've saved it, hopefully. So we have a budget detail worksheet here. So you just double click and now it's attached. If you get here and you haven't filled it out yet, here's where we've added this link that takes you to our website. Mm. And then you could go in here to reporting and forms. And there's the budget detail worksheet. And then you could fill this out. 
you know, save it to your computer and then go back to Optus and attach it. So that was the last step here. Would, would you also attach your, um, if you have a preventive maintenance grant, you t attach your preventive maintenance detailed sheet on here as well? That would be at the reimbursement request because you're okay. requesting reimbursement for preventive maintenance, right? Yeah. And that's sort of, so you would attach that to the reimbursement request. Okay. Yeah, see, I just send everything in as one big mess. Right. So oh. that's why I'm just like, see, we're so making you separate it out. Yeah. So oh, perfect. All right. <laughs> the mental separator there really is that your agency periodic report is primarily intended to be items that apply to your entire agency. And then, right. and so that's why it's kind of the documents for the whole quarter, too. Um, and then on your reimbursement request, it's the support documents for that particular reimbursement. Okay. Very good question. So you've finished the wizard, and this is what the online report looks like, and it has just your agency information. There's the person I chose as the authorized representative, and here's all the information that I filled in. This is that little place I added. You notice um, when I'm hovering over these, they <coughs> change. So when you're reviewing this after you've gone through the wizard, if you see something that's not right, these are live links, it'll take you right back to the screen where you would need to fix it. Oh, cool. That's really a nice feature. So any of this that you needed to change, it would take you right back there. Okay, and there's even a control number. So then a good thing to do is you could go to actions and check integrity on this document. And it doesn't, um, it's not going to know if you misreported something, but it will check if there are any required fields that are not filled in. And it would tell you where they are. You need to go back to this section and, and redo it. That's especially useful in an agency where one person completes the information and another person clicks on complete step and enters any response keyword after reviewing it. Because the person who's doing the data entry can check integrity to see that everything's okay before they forward it to the approver. Which is what I'm gonna do now. So I'm logged in as Fern, I'm not the approver. I've completed my work and I'm going to forward it to Charlotte. So there's this forward, it's under actions, forward. It also has PTD staff you could forward it to. But I'm going to forward it to Charlotte and I just say, Oh, here's the email. Send email to agent responsible for the document. If I click this, and I believe this works, when I submit return, the document within Optus goes to Charlotte's queue and also generates an email to her inbox that says there's a document waiting for you to, um, this is a fictitious email address that's not gonna go anywhere. This does work? I believe so. Hmm. Now, one of the requests we've had where was that? Where oh, there it is. Oh, nice. So then you get to see it and you can edit whatever. This is just um, pre-populated information. So if you wanted to personalize it, you could. And then send it on its way to the reviewer, approver. Does somebody else have a question? Okay. Um, now, we've had some requests for, you notice when I hit forward or complete, it just kind of all went away and takes you back to this screen. There's nothing that says your periodic report has now been submitted or forwarded or anything. It just kind of disappears. And you, um, if you went back and searched for it, so if we went back to my documents, document search, document number, you put that document number in and did a search, you'd be able to find it. This is what you just created. It's at the issue step. This does not mean that there's a problem with your document. We've had some calls where people are saying there's an issue with it. I don't know what the issue is. <laughs> um, it's just a status. It's the status of issue. It needs to be issued. Right. And it's not complete yet. If I open this up, you notice that this complete step is grayed out. That means it's no longer in my queue as Fern. 
because I forwarded it to Charlotte. So I would not be able to work on this now because it's not in my queue. You can also see that by going to workflow history and you see that Fern started it, then she forwarded it at, and what time she forwarded it to Charlotte and it's now in Charlotte's queue. So whoever the last person on this list is that's highlighted in yellow, that's the person whose queue this document now exists. And that's important because sometimes you go in and you can't figure out why you can't work on this. Um, I think, no you can't. So um, I was hoping you could forward it back to yourself, but you would have to, if you wanted to work on it, you would have to contact Charlotte and say, hey, can you go into Optus and forward that back to me? I need to do more work on it. So now I would go in as Charlotte and do a document search. And I just got that email saying what number it was. And I searched for it. And I opened it up. And the words complete step are not grayed out because it's in my queue. And so this is where I would review it. And I'd say, Fern did an awesome job. That's just wonderful. And I would say, complete step. And this is the review approved screen. You have to check the box saying that you are the authorized representative and it's correct. <coughs> And then you enter your e-response keyword, which is? While she's entering that, I'm going to make one comment because it came up recently. Um, you see the oval at the top that says submit, and then below that there's an oval that says go next to, to send a new e-response keyword to the registrar. And Miley mentioned earlier that that, that go link doesn't send an email to anyone so you have to contact us but if you click that go link it doesn't complete the report but it does disable your current e-response keyword so it's important to remember to click submit and <coughs> go at this window Thank you. of course we'll just fix it for you if it's broken but yeah. save you a little time and I guess that was a, a help feature for where if you enter your e-response keyword incorrectly and you can't remember it and you know you need a new one, then it's right here and on the screen where you can mm -hmm. submit it. So let me see if I can do it correctly now. <laughs> hmm, I've changed these so many times. Anyway, if you did it right, if you had it right, it would say, I think all this would just disappear and it would take you back to the that says it's been submitted. Okay, so now you get to practice this yourself. Any questions, it'll, it'll be great is it, to Is there a there. screen that shows that, it, was it Charlotte submitted mm -hmm. it for final approval? Mm-hmm. Or was that? Let me find Did you just one. go back to the document search and... Yeah. Um, let's just look for all periodic reports. And it won't show because it didn't go through. It didn't go through, but I'll show you one that did. So if you open up one that's finished, when you go to the workflow history, oh. Oh, yeah. okay. it shows exactly what happened and when it happened. There is this clock, I never talked about that, this Optus time. It's just a clock that's always running behind the scenes so that every document, uh, only when it's completed, will have like a time stamp on it. Marley? Yes. It, does that program um, close down on you after a certain time? Like if I'm, yeah. How much time do you have for it? An hour, mm -hmm. I think. An hour or so. I don't know exactly, but if you go away and just leave it open, it, you'll come back and it, you will have been logged out. And possibly some of your data will not be saved. Yes. Sure yeah. you, I think you mentioned that yesterday. Mm -hmm. so it is important to save, and on the fields where you can't save, halfway through the whole entire screen and put a placeholder in of zero or do what Jenny said on the assets and put that in. Um, like you were telling me yesterday, Jenny, or the day before, putting all these placeholders in is time consuming right off the bat, but it's way less time consuming than having to recreate everything. Because not only does it not save, I mean, not only will it sometimes time you out, but it won't save anything. You'll have to start from all the way from the very beginning. Of it. So not good. Is that something that you are thinking about asking the software people to change? In fact, we thought it had been fixed because it was on a, a previous uh, work order and 
then we just tested it recently and it wasn't. So um, that's a fix that I think will be happening pretty soon, I hope. Were it automatically saves for you? I don't know that it would automatically save, but it would allow you to save mid-complete mid mid data entry. entry. Yeah. 